Hey guys, Adam Savage at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, and I am standing beneath the Apollo Soyuz Test Project, an incredible construction, a joint construction between America and the USSR. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today, in light of the fact that we've all just come through the pandemic and we've all been sequestered into, many of us, small spaces with our significant others and our families, and I want to talk about being confined in small spaces because when you really understand what all the space programs around the world have truly gone through to explore space, it becomes even more incredible. So this silver part right here is the command module. And it is an Apollo era command module. The uh, Apollo 15 crew went to the moon in something exactly this size and shape. So now take a look at this in relation to me and my size and picture three dudes in there for like days and days and days. And in a few cases, a couple of weeks. And then it becomes a little more clear why occasionally the astronauts would mutiny. Uh, okay, I'm talking about a very specific thing, Apollo 7. Apollo 7, this is before we landed on the moon. They're still sending astronauts up and iterating and trying different things to make sure all the equip equipment works. The Apollo 7 crew went up into orbit, living inside the command module. This is just stuff. There's nothing here for them to like get elbow room. All of their living happens inside this cone. Yeah. So they got pretty salty about the work schedule from NASA. And in a few cases, they stopped cooperating. Uh, they also, I mean, to be truly fair to them, they're confined in something like that. They all three got head colds. Uh, and yeah, they got darned salty about it and stopped talking to NASA for a period of time. And it's now known as the, the, the NASA mutiny. It blows my mind, the idea of being able to exist in a space that small with other colleagues and be able to do your job. It also, it makes it clear why NASA has gone through so many iterations of figuring out what makes a great astronaut and understanding that perhaps some of the hotshot test pilots they were working with for the very first Mercury program wouldn't necessarily have the Let's say, I just want to point out that clearly in order to be an astronaut, you've got to be very unflappable. You've got to be able to work with others under the most excruciating conditions. Uh, and that is a very specific psychological profile and one I believe that NASA tests for today when they're looking for proper astronauts. Because having met a couple of dozen of them over, over my life, having been very lucky enough to spend time with a few of them and be friends with some, they are some of the most easygoing, astronauts in general, in my experience, are some of the most easygoing, unflappable, calm personalities. And that dovetails and jibes beautifully with what I think it would take to survive in such a tiny space. Now, I haven't checked in with many of them as to how they weathered COVID, but I'm pretty sure they all did fine. I want to talk about more than just confined spaces, because actually just sitting here looking at this, there's so much that's remarkable about it. So picture couple of Russians in this side, a couple of Americans in this side. These guys leave from Russia. These guys leave from the United States. They go into orbit. They go into low Earth orbit. And now they're falling around the world together, but maybe at vastly different speeds. Their speeds have to be communicated to each other. And then the delta between those speeds has to get removed. You want no delta between those speeds. You want them coming around together in perfect harmony. And then you have a spike on this and a receiver on this and up in space, human beings were able to bring one to the other so that they could open a door and connect and meet up in space. From an engineering standpoint, it's absolutely mind blowing. I look at this and it, I feel nothing but terror about every stage of it. And it's remarkable that it worked. One more aspect about how amazing this is. One set of measurements is happening in the United States the other in the USSR. These are two different languages, two different alphabets. And if anything within this, within the mating system between these two ships, if any single piece of it is off by the tiniest fraction, it's not going to work and people are likely to die. So again, there's this wonderful universality to engineering as a discipline, as an exercise. And this is the a perfect encapsulation of it, that 
teams of engineers and scientists using two different alphabets, languages, and measurement systems were able to build something that married in the most inconvenient space possible, which is space. Yeah, it's remarkable.